Hi and welcome to Diabetic365 and today we have a very special guest from Jacksonville, Florida and she is um, Jackie and she has type 1 diabetes from uh, you know 20 years when she was uh, 12 years old she had uh, this type 1 di uh, diabetes and she has been living from a uh, type 1 diabetes disease from 20 years she's going to explain all the share the story her uh, ups and lows that she faced from the past 20 years so welcome to the show Jackie thank you so uh, if you can recollect your diagnosis story uh, when you were 12 years old, how was it like and what was your experience at the time? Well, um, I had all of the like, classic symptoms. I was losing a lot of weight. Um, I was really thirsty all the time. I had to pee all the time and I was falling asleep in class like after, after lunch. Um, and I had a best friend whose mother was a nurse and she kind of noticed what was going on and saw my mom in the grocery store and um, talked to her about getting the urine strips to see if I was filling urine and I was um, so we went to the emergency room and I was diagnosed but um, prior to that I had a few other false diagnoses, diagnoses. I, um, I was diagnosed with uh, mono or the theory was that I had mono and that's why I was so tired and didn't feel well Obviously, that turned out to be false. Um, so I spent about a week and a half in the hospital and got out, and I haven't been back in since then, knock on wood. So you were 12 years old at the time, right? That's pretty engaged, so you should have been in a fifth or sixth grade at the time. Yeah, I was in seventh grade. Seventh grade. So, uh, so how did you manage once you know that you're type one very How how did you your friends take it? How did you manage this in the school as a uh, as a kid? Well, I was um, lucky in a lot of senses in that I had a friend who had been diagnosed three years earlier, a close friend of mine. So I kind of already knew what was going on with that. Um, and I was in a group of uh, classes in middle school where I had the same teachers for the, the three years, and they were very um, into everything that was going on. My science teacher let me sort of set up home base in his office, so if I ever needed to check my blood sugar or get a snack or whatever, I could always go to his office. My English teacher, um, she had type 2 diabetes, so she, they were all very, you know, attentive and very understanding. And um, I know not everybody has that, so I consider myself very lucky to have had that the first couple of years that I was that I was dealing with everything. Mm -hmm. I don't think that. Um, I mean, I know it was a big adjustment for me. I think it was more an adjustment for my parents, learning mm -hmm. to do everything. And um, that was back in the days of you know, kind of the stricter exchanges. So cooking dinner and getting breakfast and meat before school got a little complicated for my mom and dad, I think. No. So, uh, I mean, later when you went to college, were you uh, more open about your diabetes or were you hiding it to your yourself? I never hid it, but I, I, um, I didn't talk about it too much. Um, I didn't want to come off as the person that talks about diabetes all the time and I did want to seem kind of normal. Mm -hmm. um, there was a support group at one of the schools that I went to in uh, Missouri, Truman State University. We had a, um, a diabetes support group, um, and I remember that was the first time I ever had any experience seeing other people with the insulin pump. Um, mm -hmm. I was the last person to get the pump out of our out of our little group. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know I didn't hide it. I didn't like to talk about it that much, but I do remember you know there's certain things you can't escape especially in college, you're so close to so many other people, you can't, you can't really play it off. Um, mm -hmm. I remember getting, like, they did the, the protein test, it was like one of those terrible 24-hour urine tests, mm -hmm. and they gave, they give you that jug mm -hmm. that you have to carry around with you and, and um, sort of collect, I can't believe I'm talking about this, and I remember going into the health center at, on uh, the campus with this jug, and it was like, flu shot day, I think, and this is North Missouri, so everyone everyone in the school is is there to get their flu shot, and I walk in with this giant red thing, and everybody wants to know what it is. So, um, other than that, I didn't really have any bad or awkward moments. I had very supportive friends, so. Uh -huh. So, uh, I mean, the kind of one difficult thing, or uh, when you try to uh, find your li life partner, and when you go on a date, or something like that, in your teen years, how difficult was it explaining your diabetes to your life partner or you know supposed to be your life partner um well i am i'm married now and i met my husband when i was 25 
um, 26, and we started talking about it right away, and I think that we had a special connection because even though this is a lot different, he, um, he is allergic to eggs. Mm -hmm. So he kind of understood that idea of having to sort of shape your eating habits in your life around different things. I mean, it is completely different, but it's something that, that he's had to deal with because he's you know, got to kind of tiptoe around that all mm -hmm. the time. And before that, I don't really remember it being, you know, before I had the pump, it was more, I think it was more of a non-issue. It, it really becomes something that you have to address when it's connected to you all the time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people I dated always knew what was going on with me, but um, I think it, you know, clearly it becomes more of an issue when you're married to someone and you're living with someone. Exactly. Um, but he's kind of learned along with me. It's been a process, but we're in a good place now. Okay, that's very good. So, uh, what are kind of adjustments that your partner needs to be, uh, or your spouse needs to make uh, when someone has uh, diabetes? What is the biggest adjustment at least? Um, I think one of the adjustments, or a major adjustment is um, just understanding, just knowing what's going on. Um, because, you know, if two people were dating, and I guess if um, a, a guy and a girl are dating and the, the woman is hungry, you know, say I'm hungry, I have type 1 diabetes, and I'm dating a guy who doesn't know what the heck is going on, he may just think I'm, you know, being snobby or bratty snobby. or something. And I think that comes, I think that's more in like the, the beginning of the, beginning of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And as it goes on, I think, um, I think the, the thing that's most, most important to extrapolate on that issue is um, the lows. Because mm -hmm. it's always, that's when you really need help. I mean, you can complain about having a high blood sugar to someone that you're dating or someone that you're living with, but um, when exactly. you... Exactly. That, that, that was my next question. Like, how do you exactly deal with your highs and lows? And most, the most one is, uh, the toughest thing is dealing with your lows, as you wrote in your blog a few days back. So how do you deal with that? Um, I try to avoid them at all costs. <laughs> um, which of course isn't, it, you know, it's a difficult balancing game because you you want to keep your A1C in a certain place and you want to keep your blood sugar in a certain place, but it's so hard to um, to to avoid those lows when you are keeping your A1C in a certain place. So I I think, and this may be a detriment, you know, I've got I've got the MiniMed um, continuous glucose monitor, and I have a a habit of, you know, if I feel kind of hungry or maybe I feel a little bit like I could be low and I see the down arrow, like I immediately stop everything and suspend it or go eat something. So, um, of course they aren't always completely accurate and I don't always, I'm not always able to check, but you know, I remember my endocrinologist saying, you know, 20 years ago, it's always better to be high than low, which may not be the best advice, but, mm -hmm. um, Basically, I, you know, what I've learned is just always keep something around, mm -hmm. um, which can be a pain, but luckily there's so many different things. Exactly. So now you're on a pump from quite a while, and also you changed the pump, right? So what are your uh, experiences by using the pump? Um, I started using the pump, I guess, about 11 or 12 years ago, and I, I remember bringing it home and just being terrified that I was going to have to, you know, stick this needle inside me and it was going to have to stay there. And of course, you know, I'd already had diabetes for almost 10 years. So I used, I wasn't, you know, unfamiliar with needles, but, um, something about having it stuck to your body just seemed a little bit weird and a little 20, bit different. 24 hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact, you know, and of course I'm thinking if I mess this up, this infusion sets like $45 or $20 or, you know, however much it costs. So, um, I, uh, I I did have some issues. I was uncomfortable with clothes and you know trying to. I never I never hit it. I never like tucked my pump away very much. I always just wanted to make sure that it was in a place that was accessible and was comfortable. So if I'm I'll, usually always wearing jeans or pants, so I just keep it clipped on there. But I do think back to the times when I could just like throw on a sundress or something and not worry about having this thing clipped to me. So. Um, it's, I've never tried like the Omnipod or anything like that. The Medtronic is all I've ever had. So I've always had that mm -hmm. connection, I guess. So, uh, the next question here is, uh, it's a little, a little tricky. It, 
uh, how comfortable do you feel when you uh, when you try when you have to explain your diabetes uh, to someone? Um, I guess it depends on what the context is. Um, if I it's a friend or a friend, it, you know, it depends. It depends on how people broach the subject because sometimes mm -hmm. someone will ask you a kind of a stupid question about your pump or something. Uh, two days ago, a guy asked me, I had my, um, I still have my, my sensor on, and a guy saw it and asked me if I had cat scratch fever, and I think he was, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what cat, scr cat scratch fever, if they have to have these things stuck to their arms, but, but then um, yesterday a guy saw my bracelet, my Medtronic bracelet, and just asked me, are you diabetic? So, you know, he was a complete stranger, but he was familiar with everything. And, you know, it just depends on the context. And when people are normal, for lack of a better word, it's I think it's easier to have that conversation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, the next question is, uh, tell us some of the things that you learned the hard way in your 20 years of diabetes life. Things I learned the hard way. Um, I would have to say... Um, just being accepting of things that you can't control, um, knowing what's in your control and what's not in your control. You know, you can only do your best, not beating yourself up for the, the things that, um, the things that you, you, you know, you wake up and you've got a super high blood sugar and, you know, people will ask you what you did wrong. You know, sometimes it's just because you have diabetes. Mm -hmm. Um, I learned, uh, I learned the hard way, you know, like I was talking before, I was having food. I learned that the hard way a couple times. I've never had any like real bad hospitalizations or I've never had to go to the emergency room or anything, but it's awful when you find yourself with a really bad low and you realize you have like pistachios and, uh, you know, a couple of um, events like that, you'll make sure that you also have. Uh -huh. So tell us at least one secret or something that you never wrote it on your blog to our uh, in this video a secret or anything about yourself that you haven't mentioned it in your blog um this is not diabetes related but um uh, my husband's name is bob and my dog's name is bob. <laughs> um i got the dog before i met my husband and it was like two weeks um and i don't i don't think i've mentioned that on on my blog at all <laughs> that's that's very good so uh, your final thoughts as uh, you know, uh, as a diabetes advocate or your diabetes advocacy, and your final message to the all the diabetic community out there. Well, um, I just want to say that I appreciate you doing this, and I appreciate the opportunity to to speak with you about this, which you know leads to my message, which is I think that we are all so much healthier, um, both mentally and physically, when we stick together and we share all this stuff and we have all these conversations with each other. So um, thank you. And I just want to encourage people to, you know, talk about it more, I guess. Um, and get going. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie, so much for sharing your thoughts and also, uh, you know, spending your time no to re reach out to the community out there. And you have a nice day. Thank you and take care. All right. Thank you.